Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the semi-finals of the Skilling Open 2020 and today I would like to show you one of the games where Magnus Carlsen is going to play as white and his opponent Jan Nepomniasi is going to play as black. So uh, this time, without further ado, uh, let's just jump straight to the board. We have d4, knight f6, we have c4, we have g6, knight c3 and d5. So uh, Greenfield defends again uh, and now it's a very interesting uh, situation because after C takes on D5, Knight takes on D5, Magnus didn't go for the E4 immediately but rather Bishop D2 first and after Bishop G7 only then um, E4. So what is the difference? Now after Knight C3, uh, Magnus doesn't need to take, it would not make any sense uh, to take with the pawn but he took with the Bishop. And now what is the difference? First this Bishop uh, is actually opposing them the dark square bishop of, of black and this actually adds different ideas on the board so let's see what happened uh, nepo castle we have queen d2 we have knight c6 this is how it's played knight f3 bishop g4 and now d5 attacking the knight and the knight cannot get to the center because this knight actually controls the central squares so what black have to do uh, and it was played by nepo is bishop f3 and now bishop g7 by magnus king g7 and g takes on f3 and now the knight can jump to e5 and already make the first very serious threat so white have to react somehow so what is the reaction of magnus carlsen castle on the queen side and this is the, the only move in the position it was played by Vichy Anand in 2014 against Magnus Carlsen so Magnus Carlsen um, during the world championship match in 2014 played this uh, with the black pieces against Vichy Anand. So definitely both of the players know their position. Now for your information, you of course cannot take the pawn because you're gonna lose the knight. Very beautiful uh, fork. So uh, it's actually guarded by the tactic. So we have c6. Uh, we have four games in the database. All of them are drawn, so the commentators say that the position is uh, maybe a little bit tricky, but uh, it usually ends in the draw. There are no, you know, a lot of tactical hits. However, they were not uh, exactly right. What happened in the game where Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces played against Vichy? Vichy went for queen c3. Obviously, it's a very good move, pinning the knight, uh, and Magnus played f6, making a space for the for the knight on the. F6. Seven, uh, and then after Bishop H3, very important move. Now taking under control C8, so there are no tricks on the on the C file here. After exchanging in the center, uh, we had C takes on um, D5, E takes on D5, and now of course uh, Knight F7 just taking under control d6 because in the right moment white would love to actually push this pawn and then we had f4 queen d6 attacking the the pawn uh queen d4 and 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 so on so this was played by 24 years old magnus uh, and the game ended with the draw so nothing fancy here okay now uh magnus in this position uh play as white and first he went for bishop h3 so i'm not sure he just changed the the order of the moves or and because it doesn't really matter or it's quite tricky but here we have uh, nepo didn't go for the f6 um, that is the first difference uh, he could go for the same lines but he went for king g8 so it makes a lot of sense because now there is no pin here possible uh, but magnus went for queen c3 anyway now attacking the knight so uh, something has to be done here. Now f6 doesn't work because we have bishop e6 coming with the tempo. King g7 and look at this. Uh, f4, knight f7, now h4 is coming, h5, um, f5 and so on. A lot of dangerous ideas by white out of nowhere. Uh, white would have a very very strong attack. So f6 doesn't work now. Uh, knight d7, you would like to escape with the, with the knight. It also doesn't work because after d takes on c6 b takes on c6 uh white of course winning the piece because this bishop controls also d7 so that's not also not possible 
So finally, uh, what Nepo uh, should play here is Queen C7, and he started to think in this exact position. Uh, he started to think Queen C7. If I play Queen C7, my uh, king is no longer on the on the G7. The character of the position is changed. Uh, what can go wrong? The wrong uh, what could go is D6. This is what Nepo uh, was afraid of because now the pawn is attacking the queen. Uh, and there is no choice, have to play e takes on d6, then we have f4, the knight have to escape, and now we're gonna have e5, uh, and white get the very nice position. Uh, if you play d5, then you have rook d5, knight b6, let's say, rook d6, and look at this, this rook is a pretty pretty great uh, rook, also these pawns uh, are not so bad, they, they are gonna uh, storm the position of the king. Uh, Nepo didn't like it, so he was taught for a while, and... Uh, this is the first move where he didn't make it immediately so that means uh, it was a bit shocking for for him but this is the typical position with this queen on this diagonal and the bishop it's everything very typical here and of course uh, d6 is one of the ideas here uh, in this opening uh, so he went for queen b8 uh, now saying okay if you play d6 then at least uh, it's not attacking my uh, queen so i can play whatever i want but he was completely wrong about that so pause the video right now and find the winning move, the crushing move by Magnus Carlsen in this position. This is huge difference uh, if you move the queen uh, from to t c7 and b8 and control the d6. So this is the hint for you and uh, I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Nothing changed here. d6 is winning. But there is the one difference, one huge difference. After uh, e takes on d6, because you don't have a better move, there is the problem, f4, and this knight, can we call it, in, if it's in the center, it's octopus knight, look all at all of these squares, the knight cannot go anywhere, this is the saddest octopus knight in the chess history. This is, this is just shocking what happened here. This knight is trapped, cannot go anywhere. All the pieces, all the squares are actually uh, controlled by the queen, by the bishop and so on. So it's, it's actually shocking that the knight in the center can be trapped this way. Very, very sad. Uh, Nepo tries to fight a bit without the piece. So rook e8 and then Magnus didn't take the, the knight. Of course he could, uh, but he said first centralize my, my rooks because the knight is going nowhere we have a5 we have king b1 we have a4 so potentially the rook can come to the game we have f takes on e5 now magnus said i cannot improve the position of any of my pieces anymore so it's time to take it we have rook e8 and now f4 kicking the rook rook c8 now uh challenging the queen queen f6 uh the most aggressive square for the queen very close to the to the king uh, and now we have a3 we have b3 and now rook h5 with the idea of getting to h2 uh, and then attack the deliver one check to the king but there is also something deeper here so for example uh, bishop g4 was enough to win because this is all too slow rook h2 uh, and then rook d6 rook b2 you can deliver one check but after king a1 what are you gonna play next uh you can try to get for example uh maybe to e8 to attack this pawn but it's too slow another idea would be queen f8 and maybe try to get this way uh, or exchange the queens but exchange the queens magnus would have them the extra bishops and of course it doesn't work uh black don't want to exchange um the queens so e5 uh, queen h6 and it's just one move too slow uh e6 queen h2 and almost the checkmate that would be almost the checkmate but now magnus Magnus would play e takes on f7, king f8, queen h8, and this would be the checkmate. But Magnus decided that he doesn't need to care about the bishop because uh, now black gonna lose even two tempi to get to the h2. So he gonna be much faster. So this is why we have rook d6 immediately. And now if the rook takes the bishop, uh, there is the problem. Rook e to d1 and the rook gonna come to the d8 and it's all over. Rook h2, now rook d8 and the queen is lost. Okay, so queen d8, now rook d8. 
and we gonna have the queen against the rook endgame of course also uh, winning for Magnus. So this is why we have queen e8 saying okay if you double the rooks on the on the d file I'm gonna jump to the e4 and I'm gonna uh, deliver a check and now this rook together with the queen maybe they can be uh, a little bit dangerous but Magnus said no and he played the fanciest move in this position boom bishop e6 completely blocking the queen and now of course if the queen takes then the queen gonna be lost for the rook and the bishop so that's not really great this is why we have f takes on e6 and now own pawn actually is blocking all the actions of the queen so there is no hope so after rook e to d1 uh, Jan Nepomniaci just resigned. What a blunder in his favorite opening. He just blundered again. Couple of months ago, I showed you the game against Vichy Anand. He lost in 17 moves and now it's 26 moves, but it's still, you know, the same caliber of the, of the lost, losing the piece. Something is, is very tricky in this Greenfield defense. A lot of lines, very tricky lines, and you have to be very, very careful, but this is how you become, you know, better and better expert uh, and uh, he resigned because of course uh, he cannot do anything if he tries to exchange the queens that is the only way then we're gonna have rook d8 or if the queen is on the f8 it doesn't really matter uh, we're gonna have rook d8 and it's all over rook d8 and that would be the the checkmate of course so after rook e to d1 uh, he just resigned uh, and i would like to show you the the score so what just happened magnus carlsen won only one game uh, and then we had um, the rest of the draw so magnus got the first uh, point uh, the first mini match goes for Magnus and also Wesley so won one of the games against Hikaru Nakamura and he also is leading today uh, the players gonna gonna play another round and we're gonna see uh, if Yanni Pomniashi wins or Hikaru Nakamura wins uh, then they gonna have um, extra extra games tiebreak and then uh, we're gonna have uh, potentially Armageddon and and then tomorrow and after tomorrow we're gonna see the great final Finals and Magnus Carlsen uh, have the birthday on the November 30. So the dates of the of the tournament are not chosen randomly. You know, Magnus wants to try to get the very nice uh, birthday gift. And uh, then yeah, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you want to see uh, more games from the Skilling Open 2020, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.